Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. to worship him. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They will come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Epah. All those from Sheba shall come, and they shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of God. A reading from Ephesians 3. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words. A reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 
That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I have become a servant, according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Listen now to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Oh, send us before him now, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Hear the news of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this, Christ was born for this. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave, Jesus Christ was born to save. Come at his most gracious call to find salvation, one and all. Christ was born to save, Christ was born to save. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, Bring me word, so that I may may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, 
O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, today in the church calendar is the Feast of the Epiphany. And we're well familiar with the story, the wise ones from the East who travel a great distance, uh, led by a star, and they find and worship uh, Israel's king, the boy Jesus. This past week, well, as I'm saying this, it's still December, uh, but recently there has been this astronomical phenomenon where Jupiter and Saturn, our two uh, largest planets in the solar system, have been closer than they've been uh, for 400 years. And it sounds like it's something that happens approximately every 400 years. It's called uh, extreme conjunction or great conjunction, something like that. And many uh, believe that perhaps the Star of Bethlehem was again this uh, phenomenon of the coming together of Saturn and Jupiter to form this bright light in the sky. It doesn't matter to me whether it was this uh, astronomical phenomenon that has been known and, and charted and, and, uh, and noted, or whether it was a special star sent by God just for that night. What matters is what the star represented to those who followed it and to uh, the writer of Matthew's Gospel. Because what it signified was that Jesus had come not only to Israel, but for the whole world. The word epiphany means a revelation. Perhaps you have uh, said to yourself or heard others say, I had an epiphany, you know, the light bulb went on. It was a moment of clarity. And in the season of epiphany, uh, the season of revelations, each week we'll, we will hear something new and revelatory about Jesus Christ. And the first epiphany on this day of epiphany and in the season of epiphany is that Jesus is God's gift to the whole world. He is uh, God's gift to Israel to be sure, but beyond that he is for all the world God loves. The wise ones, uh, we don't know how many of them there are. Traditionally it's three, but the Bible doesn't tell us. They see something in the sky. They know that something important is going to happen. And they come uh, just seeking, seeking knowledge, seeking to be a part of this great thing that uh, God was up to. We've seen those bumper stickers, of course, uh, wise men still seek him, and I believe that's true. And the tragedy of this story from Matthew's Gospel is that uh, those who perhaps uh, should have been looking were not. It's always struck, struck me as uh, odd and sort of sad that the biblical scholars, the ones that Herod consults to say, where is the Messiah to be born? They know exactly where he is to be born, and they've surely heard the rumors, and yet they are not out looking. It is the foreigners, it is the ones on the margins, the ones on the outside, who do not have all the correct information. They are the ones that are looking and are seeking. And so yes, we seek uh, to seek him ourselves. We desire to seek uh, God and to seek uh, what God is up to ourselves. But let us also be humble enough to recognize that others um, are seeking as well, perhaps in their own ways. And just because we have all the right information does not always mean that our hearts are in the right place. And so this epiphany, we give thanks that Jesus is God's gift to the whole world. And we ask for the grace to uh, continue to seek him ourselves and to um, help others who are looking, just as uh, those wise ones uh, needed that assistance from the star and needed that dream to warn them how to get home safely and how to keep Jesus safe, we are um, all on a path and God has given Christ as a gift to all the world. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. 
O Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear our prayer. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family and help them to bring peace to other nations. Lord, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share the good things you provide. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind, especially as we go through this pandemic together. We pray for all who are involved in giving their help. Lord, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful and an eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him, his glory proclaim. Gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, bring and adore him, the Lord is his name. Lo, at his feet lay thy burden of carefulness, I on his heart he will bear it for thee. Comfort thy sorrows and answer thy prayerfulness, guiding thy steps as may best for thee be. Fear not to enter his courts in the slenderness of the poor wealth thou canst reckon as thine. Truth in its beauty and love in its tenderness, these are the offerings to lay on his shrine. These, though we bring them in trembling and fearfulness, he will accept for the name that is dear. Mornings of joy give for evenings of cheerfulness. Trust for our trembling and hope for our fear. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Bow down before him his glory proclaim. Gold of obedience and incense of lowliness, bring and adore him, the Lord is his name. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.